hey a very good evening so in this video i am going to talk about the interview questions um, that are asked particularly in organic chemistry so i have a good data set of organic chemistry and i thought i would dedicate this video only to organic chemistry once i get the time uh, to have some questions or make a you know bunch of questions for physical chemistry as well um uh, and of course in organic chemistry i will try to compile that right um anyway um so the whole idea was to take uh, the experience of different candidates from different institutes so particularly i've taken from iits uh, and uh, i thought to bring that out um even though most of the interviews have already taken place but i guess there are still some interviews and this is not just applicable to iits but any other institute as well be it icer or jncsr okay for jncsr i have made several other videos as well uh, which maybe i'll give you a link to somewhere over here all right so anyway let's uh, go into the uh, interview um, questions what they ask and uh, the second thing that i want to tell you is that even if you haven't qualified uh, csi net grf and you are only gate qualified even then you should try and you know give these interviews and even if your rank is not that great recently um, i had made a video with uh, fanny uh, who had got a rank of 1958 and made it to iit gandhinagar and then another student um, i have got to know with the rank same rank 1958 got into iit madras so even if you have a high four digit rank in gate still if your interview goes well um, i mean you will be able to uh, kind of like you know secure a good um, institute for your phd and uh, don't get disheartened about or don't get overwhelmed about the questions that are going to be asked even though it might be a very great institute but the questions um turn out to be quite basic they just really want to test your basics because the relevant skills and the theoretical knowledge you will develop when you do research as well right so they just want to see you if your basics are um clear or not okay so uh, without wasting any more time let's um jump onto the questions so um i would like to thank first of all um, mostly uh, most of the questions are provided by ankush and fanny and uh, uh, ankush is a phd candidate at iit kanpur and uh, fanny is a phd candidate at iit gandhinagar of course there are more students as well but majority of uh, majority of the questions uh, or more detailed questions have been provided by both of them so um if i talk about iit kanpur um so then uh, the preference they will generally they will ask you the preference um so one of the candidates had mentioned the preference as pericyclic and nmr so most of the questions are uh, revolved around um, heat and photochemical conditions with mechanism so different reactions were given and uh, you know in heating conditions what is going to be the stereochemistry in photochemical conditions what is going to be the stereochemistry um what kind of rotation is going to be taking place disrotatory or contrarotatory so those kind of questions were asked uh, very very basic then there were questions from proton and nmr of the products that were made in the stereochemical um in, in like th that were made in the pericyclic reactions okay what would be the chemical shift values um what would be the coupling constant let's say for trans alkene is forming what is going to be the coupling constant um then there were also questions um on the um you know the stereochemistry part let's say um if we have got diastereomers then how would you separate it uh, or how would you detect it in nmr if you have got enantiomers would you be able to uh, you know would you be able to differentiate in the nmr if you would not be able to differentiate then what do you need to add in order to differentiate enantiomers in the nmr so that was like chiral solvating agents so you see uh, as you keep on answering the questions they go de deeper and deeper into the concepts right and then uh, one um, you know uh, i would say um not very commonly asked question that was asked to this particular candidate was about ferromagnetic ratio so these were the some of the questions and this interview went about 30 to 40 minutes and as soon as one enters they ask for the introduction and then they ask for what you have prepared for the interview or what are your favorite topics so over there you can prepare one or two topics so like this particular candidate had mentioned pericyclic and nmr then there was another candidate who was interviewed at iit kanpur uh, and uh, he had mentioned reagents and catalysis so uh, the questions that were asked were about wilkinson's catalyst um and what is the mechanism um what is the role of tempo in a particular reaction okay this is a reagent what is its role um then the questions were related to weinreb amide what exactly is a weinreb amide and why is it used um then the question was on the reagent um that is used in the simon smith reaction okay and why does it lead to um you know uh, uh, like why does it need to cyclopropanation uh, from the same stereochemistry in which the allylic alcohol is present right and then there was question on uh, how do you make syn and trans diols uh, when an alkene is given to you so with the mechanism so over here you could have mentioned about the 
pre-washed and the wood wort reaction okay so these were the questions that were asked to a candidate who had mentioned reagent and catalysis as a preference um although i would not suggest you to mention reagents and catalysis because this is a very very broad topic okay pericyclic and nmr like you can see um if you have prepared pericyclic and nmr well um you know th these are limited topics i mean you will be able to answer the questions well when you say reagents almost uh, you know all everything in organic chemistry is based on reagents right so it basically does not narrow down the topic that you have prepared well so that is why i would not suggest to mention reagents and catalysis anyway the next was iit gandhi nagar so in iit gandhi nagar one of the candidates mentioned spectroscopy itself just spectroscopy okay or organic spectroscopy as the topic of choice um so the first question was asked how to differentiate between 1 and 2 degree amine using ir spectroscopy okay so in 1 degree amine you will get two peaks with a shoulder and in secondary amine you will only get one peak in the 3200 to 3300 region so that was that like that is one thing that comes to my mind when you ask me the different how to differentiate using ir spectroscopy um then where you will get the ir spectra for an aldehyde uh, then the question was asked related to carpless equation um then what do x and y axis like what are the uh, you know um, inputs in the x and y axis um for uv ir and nmr spectra and then there were questions on chemical shift value uh, like you have to convert the chemical shift value that is given in hertz to that in ppm so how will you co convert this uh, provided the um you know the uh, the frequency of the instrument is given to you um then another candidate was asked questions like he gave the preference again as uh, spectroscopy and nmr Uh, sorry um pericyclic and nmr so the questions were asked uh, that uh, uh, like in a 2 plus 2 cyclic addition reaction what is the mechanism and what are the how does the concept of homo and lumo apply over here and then the question uh, as you can see uh, even though the candidate had mentioned about uh, you know about pericyclic but then there were questions from reagents also so it's not like even though I, generally they will ask you most of the questions from the topic or uh, that you mention as as your preference but it is not necessary that all, they will always ask you questions from there they can go you know outside the outside your preferred zone also and ask you the questions and sometimes they might not ask you the preference though generally what i have seen from the last two years is they are asking for your preference that what topics have you prepared initially when you go for the interview so anyway the uh, another questions again you can see over here the question was again from weinerbamide and mechanism um and then th this was some uh, i can say out of a box question that why is it called a pericyclic reaction what is the reason behind this particular reaction being called a pericyclic reaction okay and um, one question also was that uh, why or which functional groups cannot be reduced by lithium aluminum hydride so these were some of the questions from iit gandhi nagar Then, if I talk about IIT Delhi, um, then again the preference was given to pericyclic reactions by the candidate. So I've seen this. Uh, I don't know if it's if it's a, a systematic thing that is being done by students, but most of them go with the uh, you know with the um, preference as pericyclic and spectroscopy. So uh, in IIT Delhi, uh, most of the questions were asked from pericyclic were from Clayton itself. Okay. and uh, the question was about asked about the reactivity like different dienes were given and different dienophiles were given and they were asked to basically uh, arrange them according to the reactivity okay then another candidate um was not asked for any preference um like once um he went into the um went for the interview he was asked questions on uh, ring opening of epoxide okay uh, first aliphatic system wherein you know you can talk about um uh the in acidic conditions what happens and in basic conditions what happens from which side the ring, uh, you know epoxide is uh, uh, like the ring opening of the epoxide takes place the regio selectivity of the ring opening of epoxide and then the question was asked on the first first platner rule or the trans diaxial ring opening and then there were some questions from stereochemistry where you had to draw the chair conformation or the most stable conformation for certain compounds that were given certain cyclic compounds were given and you had to draw the most stable conformation for those kind of compounds okay so this was uh, uh, this was the experience of one of the other candidates from iit delhi then um, uh, in iser bhopal the same candidate who had gone to um, iit kanpur a uh, one he had also give, like suggested an experience in iser bhopal so um, over there in iser bhopal they had 
like in IIT Kanpur, they did not ask any questions about the research work done in masters. But in ICER Bhopal, they you know they asked questions based on your ma- on the masters project. What all reactions he had done in his masters project? Um, the mechanism of, mechanism of those reactions and some questions from general organic chemistry like stable stability of carbocation and stability of free radicals. What kind of carbocations are stable and what kind of free radicals are stable? And then some questions on Sharpless epoxidation, as in. Um, what will be the stereochemistry uh, and uh, and what are the role of the different reagents like what is the role of uh, dithyl tartrate what is the role of titanium um, in the in the in the reaction okay what is the role of uh, tertiary butyl hydroperoxide so those kind of questions were asked at ICER Bhopal so um, as you can see if I have to summarize or even you can uh, figure it out that mostly the questions are asked from from your preference um, but if you have done some research work in your master's or if you have done some internship uh, which you have displayed in the application form, be prepared for some of the questions from your master's project or your internship. Okay. So in short, what I would suggest is prepare at least two topics and same thing is actually applicable to inorganic chemistry and physical chemistry also. Over there also when one goes for the interview, um, now, now, nowadays in the sense in the last couple of years, they ask for your preference that what pro- topics you have prepared and they will generally ask you questions from that. Okay, and even if they are asking you questions outside those topics, they will be very general questions. Okay, not very complex, nothing like something which you haven't heard of or which you won't be able to answer if you are, if you are prepared, um, you know, decently when you were preparing for CSI net or gate. Okay. Anyway, so the two things is uh, first you have at least two topics um, that you should have prepared well. That is the first criteria. And the second thing is if you have done some summer internship or if you have done some master's project, you should be well aware of what exactly have you done over there. So if you keep these two things in mind, I think and uh, you know prepare yourself well for the interview. Um, I don't think there is any need to worry. And uh, honestly speaking, um, the the interviews are very friendly and very, uh, you know, in nature. And even if you're not able to answer some question, uh, so it's not about getting the right answer. It's about using the right approach. So sometimes what happens, even though you might not be very confident uh, if you are uh, answering it correctly or not. So they will help you. They will guide you. But But just keep a logical approach to whatever you are. Uh, doing okay so let's say if you if you don't know what a reaction does and um, you are trying to react a nucleophile and electrophile just keep it logical that what is the most nucleophilic group present over here and what is the electrophilic group present in the other reactant so how are they going to combine so if you keep it logical i think um, everything will fall in place and they are there to guide you they will help you in in going for the correct answer okay so you don't have to worry about the answer you just have to worry about the approach right so anyway i hope you found this video helpful if you did, do not forget to give it a big thumbs up and uh, and if you have any other topic in mind which you would want me to make a video on, do let me know down in the comment section, right? Um, yeah, so that's about it for this video. Thank you and I will see you in the next video really soon. That's perifilic and NMR. So most of the questions uh, revolved around um, heat and photochemical conditions with mechanism. So different reactions were given and uh, you know in heating conditions what is going to be the stereochemistry in photochemical conditions what is going to be stereochemistry and what kind of rotation is going to be taking place disrotatory or controtatory. So those kind of questions were asked uh, very very basic. Then there were questions from proto NMR of the products that were made in the stereochemical um, in, in, like the, that were made in the pericyclic reactions. Okay what would be the chemical shift values and um, what would be the coupling constant let's say for trans alkenes forming what is going to be the coupling constant. Um, then there were also questions um, on the um, you know the stereochemistry part let's say um, if we have got diastereomers then how would you separate it uh, or how would you detect it in NMR. If you have got enantiomers would you be able to uh, you know would you be able to differentiate in the NMR. Hey guys, so I'm a verified educator on an academy and along with that I'm also available on the Unacademy plus platform where I'm taking live classes along with other educators. So in case you're interested in attending the live classes, you can subscribe to the Unacademy plus platform using my referral code that is SETHI SETI and that will give you 10% discount. All right. And in case you're not interested in attending the live classes, you can watch the free courses that are available on the Unacademy. For that, all you need to do is go to the Unacademy website or download the Unacademy learning app and search my name over there. That is ACT. Once you do that, you will get the access to all the free courses that are available on the Unacademy platform. All right.